GD here, to Linus, and as you can see, this isn't an AR race, amazingly, this is actually a TRL race, because I've actually returned to uploading my TRL highlights, so, if you didn't know, this is our F1 2013 TRL Sunday League, organised by TRL Martin, our one force, who's also known as TRL McCauley. Um, coming to this, I'm really excited to be back in this game, because uh, this game's a lot more enjoyable than um, 2014. Mainly because of just the handling model and also just the driver skill gap really does, in my opinion, show over the long course of a race rather than F1 2014 which is all about going lean and um, first gear and just slamming down the throttle. But in this game you have to be very careful on the throttle and you actually have to do trail braking like you saw in my, my most recent video. Um, I was talking about that and that's something you really have to apply, particularly around this track as well. It's quite a difficult track for trail braking. But yeah, really excited to be back in this game. Not gonna lie, really, after 2014 AOR and what happened now, I was actually quite looking forward to having a break <laughs> between then and 2015 just to make other videos and not try and take the, the, the game too seriously. I was just looking to just recharge my batteries before 2015. But when I was offered and when this league was set up, I couldn't really... <laughs> just me being the competitive person I am, I couldn't really turn down the offer and I had to try and defend my um, title that I got in this league at the moment so as for the track um, this is a good track for me I feel it's a track that can really really attack and those are the tracks that normally work best for me tracks that you can attack rather than having to worry about the the curbs or other things in, in the track you can actually really attack this track and the more you attack them, the more reward you get um, in terms of the drivers in this league this is probably I'm gonna say it probably the most competitive a list of drivers that I've ever competed against in a league race or in a league over a season. Um, you see the drivers in here, you'll be able to see the results screen who they are. Um, it's pretty unreal and the, the pace in here is um, absolutely insane. You can see already a uh, pole position is currently on a 32-3 which is an insane time in itself. Uh, for me personally coming to this race, I just couldn't I just couldn't put a lap in quality. I was really struggling. I was doing 6s, 7s and 8s really. Uh, but on this game, uh, particularly when I played it uh, back in the past, and even so now really, qualifying's never really been the main part of my game. It's normally been the consistency in the race that normally gets me the results. But you can see so far on this lap, pretty good lap, taking a little bit more curb than I would like to there, but absolutely using absolute limits of track, pushing very, very hard on this lap. And as I said before this, and my PB ever is a 32-2, um, but... That was back when I used to play this game quite a lot and you may also be wondering as well why the hell am I using a racing line and <laughs> as I said before it ties in with me not really wanting to take um, league racing as seriously or wanting to have a break. I didn't really practice too much for this race. I, I did my a fair amount of practice just to get used to the track but I really didn't uh, do extensive practice because I just wanted to relax and this track I found um, in the past particularly difficult about a line even though I won here in AOR. Um, back in, I think in the previous season, AOR around here, and the last two seasons, in fact. Um, on this game, I, I just didn't practice enough really to get comfortable about line, and we managed to, we managed to take the pole position. So that was a really massive surprise to me. And you can see the list of drivers we've got here. We've got myself, Broziak, um <laughs> just gone off the screen now, but you'll be able to see in the results and throughout the race. Um, the drivers in here absolutely insane. But yeah, but going back to the racing line, um, I'll only be using it for this race and Bahrain because Bahrain I absolutely despise. Even though I won there in my last two AOR races as well, um, it's a track I really, really don't like. But they always seem to be, both of these tracks, even though I find them very difficult, they always seem to um, give me good results. So starting on pole position, absolutely perfect start. I never expected to be on pole around here. And... Um, just looking to really um, execute the race plan. My, my race pace was really good in practice, and we managed to get a quite a good start around here. So we're just going to try and just cover him off. We don't want to lose the lead because my setup I'm using, particularly understeer, is mainly built for straight line speed. So the game plan really is just, just try and stay in the lead. Or, but it was also based on overtaking as well because I thought I'd have to be overtaking quite a few people, but somehow we managed to get the pole position. So we managed to keep the lead. Just go stay in the racing line. I wasn't expecting Brozak to come up on the inside here, so just managed to just take our racing line and 
so, well, thank God we're actually still with the lead. So right now we just got to push and try and maybe possibly break out of DRS because I know Delta Tier is a, a pretty big factor around here. And I can tell you now from these first three laps are probably the best three laps I've ever done in, in my league racing <laughs> a career pretty much. You, this is what won me the race, these first three laps. I couldn't have driven any faster, any better than the, these first three laps. So I'll be leaving it in here. Um, just so you can see Yeah, but going back to uh, the league and the racing line I'll only be using it for the first two races so this and Bahrain and then from Silverstone onwards I won't be using the racing line because I'm pretty confident around the rest of the track so for me this season it was mainly these two tracks that I was quite nervous about so but <laughs> obviously here it's a really good start and you can see at the moment we're just extending the gap at the moment so our pace is very very good just nailing all the apexes now for that corner there, as you saw my qualifying, you don't actually have to go really tight to the inside. Because it's good to actually carry speed through the mid-corner. And then you can get in the throttle early, so it's actually not actually a bad thing to really miss the apex around there. But as you can see, we're using the fuel mixture as well, not quite as extensively as um, F1 2014, but still on this. Tire wear is a big issue around here, so if you can just save the revs and just not wheel spin as much, that's what I mainly try and do. And also the fuel in this game... Um, 2014 there was no real uh there's no real tracks you really have to save fuel maybe apart from one uh but in this game you definitely have to save fuel you can't stay in standard really for the whole race because you will actually lose fuel so you do need to use lean so i'm just using lean whenever i can and you can see at the moment the gap at the moment and you can see how much we're pushing and just nailing these corners we are driving very very well at the moment and i couldn't have driven as I said, any better than this, and as consistent as this at the moment, we are pushing. I was pushing very, very hard, definitely 100% at the moment, and you can see by the gap. You can see here is well over outside the DRS zone. So if they them two start battling, you can see the train behind us as well. And my mind is thinking, if I could just stay out the DRS zone, and they keep battling, then this is um, this is looking very, very good for me. And as I said before, I wasn't expecting to. Um, I was expecting to do well because I always expect to do well as I said I may come across as being overconfident to some other drivers sometimes but I think if anyone who's, anyone who's won races and is consistently winning races or has won championships I think they would also say that they believe they can actually win races before they go into it and you've always got to think that if you don't think that you're, you're not going to have any chance of winning a race and you can see here we were pulling away quite a bit per <laughs> sector I was doing a little bit of a lock up but you can see here, setting the fastest lap at the moment, and over two seconds in the lead with, on lap three. So, at this moment in time, this is what really, this is where for me personally, when I have a gap like this um, in the lead, then this is my best kind of situation really. I really, really thrive on just having that gap, having that comfort zone and being able to push as hard as I can, having clear. I feel whenever I have that situation come in front of me, then that's really when... Uh, my best really does come out and at the moment I am driving at my best and as you can see here Unleashed has gone into the pits on lap 3 so he's gone for the undercut he's really trying to win this race and I know the strategy from here because I've been racing around here in AOR for the two seasons I did around here I got a second and then I got a first so I'm quite experienced around here in, um, on this game on this track lap 6 is the furthest you really want to go so he's gone lap 3 and as I said tyre wear on this game in particular even more so in 2014 is if you have fresher tyres than someone, you're going to be um, definitely uh, quite a bit quicker. So him pitting that early, he he will get a really good undercut, but he will really suffer in any race. And to be honest, in my mind, I kind of actually dismissed him from the race because him pitting that early, um, we're still going to have our tyres are still going to be good condition. But you can see here they're starting to go off now. Um, he may get a, a decent-ish undercut. He won't get a ridiculous undercut. But with our pace advantage at the end and that number of laps got left, he's going to struggle pretty, pretty badly at the end. So I was free and pretty confident. I'm just trying to just maintain this gap at the moment. You can see with Broziak, uh, let's see what the gap is at the moment. It's three seconds. So we have, are pulling away literally at about half a second or so per lap. So the pace at the moment is the best I've ever, ever had in a league race. I know the line is definitely helping me be more consistent, but still you have to drive it and yeah I couldn't really ask anything better and you can see on Leash there look at the undercut he's got so he's got a big undercut but it's still 
he's still within striking distance, so he's not exactly a million miles ahead. And in my mind, yeah, I was feeling very good. I was quite annoyed that I got held up in the pit stop there, if you may have noticed. Normally it's a 3.1 second for a pit stop, but I think Marston came in at the same time. And since he's in the Marusha, he's right at the end of the pit lane, so that helped me up for another 1.3 seconds. I think it was a 4.4 second pit stop, so... That cut the gap to Brozak a little bit, which is not what I wanted. I want to keep extending my lead as much as possible. But you just got to get your head down and just go forget about it. And you can see here we've lost a little bit of that advantage to Brozak behind, but we've still got a decent enough advantage. And as you can see here, we're driving on the limits uh, pretty hard and still got the fuel as well. So we've been saving a bit of fuel. And you can see now, look at the tyre advantage that Unleashed is... A very very quick driver like on the same pace as the top guys but you can see with the tires him pitting those two laps earlier we started to catch him um, pretty quickly in fact so at this point I was thinking I really just want to get past him I don't want to be stuck behind him in the middle sectors so at the moment I'm putting into rich and if I can get him down into turn one and then hopefully a broziak catches him at the wrong part of the lap then that would really work for me. So I was really, really desperate to get a really good exit off this final call. So I'm saving half my cars, putting into full rich, hopefully for the better traction tyre where we should be able to get better XMs to come into this. And again, as I said, you don't really need to get anywhere near that apex, but we could have done a little bit of better corner there. So using all our fuel, all our cars, DRS activated as well. And you know I'm quite an aggressive driver, so <laughs> more than likely gotta go for move here. So we'll just go pull it down the inside, not really just trying to overtake him, but just to try and put him off. And you can see there, he's actually gone out wide. So it's, the tactic has worked a bit, and he's gone out wide again. So we've got to put into rich mix, I guess, using all our cars. So we've got to try and get past him here. If we can get past him here, this would be absolutely amazing. And you can see here, we made a bit of contact there, a bit of squeezing. But you know me, we go to try and stick it down the inside, leave him a bit of room on the outside, and he's got a little bit better traction in him. So this is our worst-case scenario at the moment, because Broziak is... Just over two seconds behind. Now we're stuck behind him in the middle sector. So we've got to get a really, really good exit. We're side by side, go to this double right. Try to hold it down inside. Try not to hit him. Try on the outside. I'm just using my racing line there because I had the inside. I'm using my racing line. And that is the move, thankfully, done. I was pretty relieved after that. <laughs> pretty close. Could have been a quite a bit more contact there. But trying to leave each other room. And in the end, just follow the racing line through. And it looks like Brozak's going to catch him at a really good time now. So he's going to get DRS in him. And he could possibly get up to us again. So that advantage of the 3.6 seconds uh, through the pit stop after being held up. And then also having a, a being a bit held up on that lap there. You can see now the advantage is almost diminished. So we've got to get our head, we've got to get our head down again. Try and put in some consistent laps. And in this kind of situation, I've had a lot of experience this before. Where things are going really well and then they start to diminish a bit. But you, you just got to forget about what, what's happened before and just treat it as a new race. So from this lap onwards, I just think I'm just going to push as hard as I can. I believe that the pace of myself and the consistency throughout the first three laps, you can see there on the same tyres, we definitely had the pace. So if we can just try and um, try and do that once again, then hopefully we can break the gap. And brozak has been stuck behind him, so he didn't actually get past him into this first corner so this is really good for us so if Unleashed can hold him up for the rest of this lap and we can break away from Unleashed and this really should be hopefully this should be a race winning moment really if we can hold him up here and you can see now we've got the absolute so much more traction in him if we could just put away for these uh, fast corner sections it should be hopefully building up the gap again we're absolutely on the limit for that corner you want to use as much track as possible but thankfully we are being clean there and you can see from the red dot, or the dot on the map now, starting to pull away from him. And I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm just hoping, hopefully, he can just hold him up. And you can see, if you keep looking at the mini map, we are definitely extending advantage now. And if you could just keep holding him up, uh, it's, look, it's just giving me more confidence for the rest of the race. So lap 10, 18 laps to go. Still a long way to go in this race, but... In my mind, um, it was only really Brozak who was in the actual challenge because Unleashed, being on the older tyres, who is now currently behind uh, by a second or so now, uh, I wasn't really too worried about him at the end of the race because this track's pretty easy to overtake. Um, you've got um, two DRS zones, long straights, and the tyre wear is very, very bad. Um, yeah, I was feeling pretty optimistic. For the rest of us so you can see the gap now is 1.6 seconds so we lost two seconds from our pit stop 
um, just from being held up and also held up on, behind Unleashed. Right now, we just got to keep pushing, just try and refocus, um, just get that momentum back. As I said before, I feel momentum is a huge thing in league racing or, or in anything you do, really. If you get that momentum and you keep pulling away from someone, um, you know, it, it swings in your favor. And you can see at the moment, he's slightly got the momentum at the moment. So, coming into our pit stop phase now, Unleash has pitted two laps before us once again. The gap between Brotech and myself has pretty much stayed the same. Just trying to manage it, just trying to save some fuel for the end of the race, just to, in case we have a bit of attack. Hopefully, coming into this pit stop, we get a slightly cleaner pit stop, a 3.1 pit stop. Okay, it's something you definitely want to be aiming for. And you can see Martin is in third place, who's very, very quick round here. Um, I don't think he really got his coil lap in check altogether because before in practice he was very very quick around here and if you're wondering who r one Force is is like I said at the start he he's actually Tyrell McCauley so um he used to race in AOR and in Tyrell obviously and he actually live streams this race so if you're interested in watching a live stream of this race then just follow him on Twitter it's r one underscore flawless the same as Gamertag and I believe you can actually watch him each race um a live stream of this race so Come on to lap 19 now towards the end of the stint. Not really too much happened. I've really just got on my momentum again. Just got on the consistency again. And as you can see by the gap. I think Brozak got in um, a few battles with people. I think he um, got uh, in amongst other people as he came out of the pits. Started getting to battles. And at the moment we're just in, in that mode again where I said. For me when I'm in a situation like this. When I've got the fresher tyres. I'm in the lead. I've got a decent buffer. I really just enjoy being able to push. I'm not someone who really likes to be cautious and save your tyres or anything. I'm someone who really likes to just keep pushing. And when I get into this a uh, groove, pretty much, then I feel I'm um, pretty. Um, I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> what to say is, but in a in a good place of mind, really. And I feel um, I've got the pace really to challenge quite a few people at this. But um, as you can see now, I believe Unleash has actually gone in the pits. I'm sure he has. I'm not quite too sure, but um, skipping on to the next lap now, and I believe this is when we're going to go into the pit. So Unleash is pitted, Brozak's behind, about 7.1 seconds behind now. So for our pace and him just batting on people, we've managed to eke out that gap even more. So at this point, coming towards the end of the race, it's just about taking it home to the flag now, not trying to break on the curbs or trying to set a lap record or anything. We just want to just save our fuel, save our tyres and just play it smart really like, I've learnt from uh, mistakes in the past trying to just um, create the biggest gap possible by just using all my fuel or going one extra lap when I didn't really need to, I'm just playing it safe I could have probably gone for an extra lap but I didn't really want to take that risk of just losing um, positions to the, the people behind you can see here, um, I think that is unleashed behind me, so if we stay out for another lap he would have actually got me in that undercut. So you can see how powerful that undercut is. And you can see the gap uh, to the third place group. There's quite a big group there. So just playing it safe. Uh, not really wanting to get any battles. So we've got the track position advantage along with the tyre advantage. Um, it's it's looking pretty good for the rest of this race. We've got six laps to go. Getting in the rhythm of the race. And yeah, again, I, I just felt like I drove very, very consistent. I uh, couldn't really have driven anymore, and I was quite surprised, really, especially for qualifying, because I didn't really have a good any qual good qualifying practice before this. But on these kind of situations and league races, I really, really do thrive, and I feel when it when it rises to the occasion, then that's when I normally deliver my best. And you can see here we've gone purple, but I believe Brozat has gone faster actually in the snap. So we can yeah, we can see here he's gone faster, <laughs> and in my mind, as I said, I was trying to play it smart, but I thought to myself. I've really got to send a message. I don't want to win the race just for consistency. I want to show that I've actually got the pace as well. So we saved a bit of fuel from the next run. Start from the next lap using some curves. And this put into Rich. And this lap's my fastest lap of the race. And I feel it was very important. Not just in results um, on, on your driving. But I feel mentally to actually deliver a message showing that you're the fastest guy. You're the most consistent guy. It really does can get inside people's heads. I know with me. In the past, when I first start, when I see that purple, that purple thing come up at the top, or someone else in the fastest lap, it, I, I think most people <laughs> would agree, if not the lying, that it does get to you. And even if you're winning a race, 
or beating that person, just knowing that they are, they're faster than you, um, puts a little bit of a down on you. So I really wanted to just send a message just to show that I haven't just got the consistency. I've got the pace also. So if I can make it a pole position, a faster slap, and a race win, doing the triple, then you cannot do any better than that. And I just wanted to just send a message to everyone. So on this lap here, pushing very, very hard, not being conservative, pushing 100% at the moment. And as you can see here, we're three temps power point at the moment. So we're on a pretty good lap. Leaving it a stand here because putting it in rich just makes too much wheel spin. But you'll be able to see here the gap behind to unleash now. We pulled out a big gap on him now. Through the older tyres, he had two lap older tyres than us. Um, so he's obviously go full back. And Brozak has got um, is still a fair way behind him as well. So it's looking very, very good. But just coming up to this last call now, just want to just try and absolutely nail this. Just to try and set the fastest lap. And as you can see here, pretty much almost perfect there. Getting on the throw, no DRS side. Going towards the line, full rich. Let's see what we can do. And it's a 33.8. So on slightly older tyres as well. And from when the previous fastest lap was set on, I managed to set the fastest lap. And I was hoping that no one would beat that for the rest of the race now unless someone appeared. So just sending that message. I just wanted to show that purple thing at the top there just to show everyone else. Um, but yeah, I was feeling very, very happy. And moving towards that 28 now, coming towards the end of the race, unleashed. Um, his tyres are starting to go off pretty badly. So Brozek has now gone second. As you can see here, gap 6.6 .6 seconds. So towards the end of the race, uh, just being conservative, not really trying to use the fuel or use the tyres or make mistakes or just not trying to avoid the curves really when braking because they really can lock you up. And as you can see here, we're not going rich. No point just trying to stumble away to line if it goes to minus one. We just want to just play it safe. I'm coming across the last corner and that is us taking the win at the first round of Tiro League in Malaysia. And as I said, it's so, so good to be back in this game. I really, really do enjoy it just through the handling model and I just feel for the skill factor as well I think it really does in my opinion demonstrate uh, with the trail braking tyre wear and fuel you really do have to not just drive well but also strategically drive well also so I hope you enjoyed this race as I did um, next round is Bahrain well we'll be using the racing line again but from then onwards I won't be um, if you enjoyed this video give it a like and see you next time cheers